Hi, Caitlin. Hi, Mark. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Happy Friday. Oh, thank you. Happy <laughs> Friday to you, too. I know. Made it. These shorter weeks seem to just always be the toughest for whatever reason. Oh. How's everything in Chicago? Um, a little crazy. Let's see. There's nobody else else. Um, so yesterday, the president basically sent out um, an email where she broke the union. Oh, interesting. So, um, yeah, I mean, good stuff. I mean, thank goodness our Romans are okay. And I don't know why this is recording because I'm not, re I don't want to record. No. Okay, great. And feel free, you can share it with anyone who missed. Okay. Okay. And then just before Caitlin starts, just want to remind everyone to go ahead and mute yourself. It'll help um, to make sure that we can all hear Caitlin, but then certainly unmute yourself to ask questions or you can use the chat. I'm monitoring that as well. Yep. Thanks, great. Caitlin. All right. Okay, so before we dive back into the editor, um, I thought it would be helpful to just look at two examples just to kind of, you know, set the context of what we're all striving for, what your students, you know, will be able to do using um, the Wix stores tools today. All right, so this first example actually comes from a student from the University of South Carolina, um, one of our great partners. And I'm gonna open up her e-commerce website. So this is Breeze Sustainable Apparel. And you can see, as soon as I land on the page, I'm greeted with um, what we call a light box. And this is just a way to kind of promote either signups to a newsletter or promotions. So a great tool um, to talk about, you know, uh, customer relations and so forth. All right, and then as you navigate through the home page, there's a great call to action to start shopping. And now you're brought into the shop and you can really browse that entire collection um, and go through the whole you know, shopping process. Okay, so this is just a great student example um, you know, of a store built on the Wix platform. And then I'll share one other. Um, so this student, Rachel Howard, is actually from St. Xavier University. Um, this is the store um, she created in Cheryl's digital retail class this past spring. Um, so I thought I'd, I'd share that with everyone today. Great example. Again, she's you know, encouraging her customers to sign up to get a 20% off using this light box. And then she has a nice call to action to shop her candles. Um, so this is you know, her product. She also has a blog. She also introduces her visitors to her story, you know, about her as the creator. And I think she does a nice job of really having like a very consistent look and feel and design for her brand. Okay, so this was done this previous semester as part of um, Cheryl's, you know, class project or assignment. All right. Um, so this is, you know, just to kind of set the stage, kind of highlight what we're working towards today. All right, any questions on those examples or what we're gonna cover? No. All, right. All right, so curious to hear um, who here was able to complete the homework assignment that we gave. Um, we asked you all to create a t-shirt store. Just curious how it went, um, if anyone had any questions or challenges or any comments um, you know, to share here. Had to email everybody to find out where the vector art was, but uh, then I got some good responses and I was able to do it. So you were able to do it. You had trouble finding vector art, okay, which we can talk about today and I can make sure everyone knows where that is once we get into the editor. But you were able to do it. All right, great. Anyone else? The attached to header, I, I had a little bit of a problem with it. You know, when you, when you upload the, the photo or the image, um, some, I mean, it was like, it seemed like it was super sensitive to attach it to okay. the header, but I eventually got it. But, um, I just thought it was kind of, it kind of took me a little bit to, yeah, to make sure that it was properly placed and positioned. Okay. Okay. All right. So the header, right, so the header art, anyone have any trouble adding that product to their store? 
I think it was an owl t-shirt we were all creating. I have a couple questions. On the vector art image, are you able to stretch the image? I know we could resize the entire image on the corners, but are you able, are you able to stretch that? Yeah, so you're able to, with vector art, make it as large as you'd like. So why don't I go ahead, I'll, I'll go into the editor and I can and share that with you. And the other great thing about vector art is you can actually change the color and the design of it to match your site colors as well, okay? Um, but yes, you can stretch it full width and you can actually set specific dimensions if you want as well in the toolbar. Okay, my next question is, after your site is published and you go back in and you wanna edit it, uh, I, was, uh, I don't know how, if we can do this, to save it over top of the old one that was published. So uh, we had to create a new name for the new one that we had edited. So are resaves allow? Yes, so yep, so you can continue to save your work every time you go back in to edit it. Um, you can make uh, changes and just save it if you're not ready to publish it, or you can publish the new version after every change so it'll automatically be live. And I can you know, show you again where those uh, buttons are to make sure um, you know, you, you're, you're saving um, as you go. Thank you. Yeah, good questions. Anyone else? Feedback from the homework? I, I had a little bit of trouble. Can you hear me? Yep. I had a little bit of trouble. Uh, I found the vector art okay, um, but I had a little bit of trouble dragging it up there. And then when I dragged it up to the header, all of a sudden it got kind of lost. So um, I had a hard time finding it back. But my question is, um, I don't know if there's an easy way, way to do that, but can you also take artwork from your computer and just add it in instead? You can. Like you can, yeah. you can Google own, and own files. Um, image do files, uh, video files, vector art that you've created on your own. And I'll remind you where you can find that in the media manager. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Great. I'm impressed everyone did the homework assignment. Um, so thanks again for, you know, participating with us. We really appreciate it. All right. So now let's move into the editor and I'll show you a few of those um, features from the homework, and then we'll move into creating our st another store from scratch today. Okay, so um, I just opened up a new browser, headed to Wix.com, and I'm already logged in. Okay, so most of you might already be logged in. Um, if you want to follow along today, just you know, if you're not logged in, just remember you just have to sign in with your email and password, the credentials you used to create your account last time, and then here. If you have multiple sites, you'll probably see a similar screen to mine. And we're gonna go ahead and create a new site today. Um, you might also just see a one single site, in which case you can click on site actions to go back to edit your site or to create a new site, okay? So remember with Wix, you can create as many sites as you want. So you can see here, I have tons of just different practice sites that um, I use when I'm learning new tools and features. Um, so you can always go in and create something new just to continue to learn um, about the product. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click this blue button to create a new site. All right. And it's just taking a second to load, of course. Let me try it again here. Never fails. All right, here we go. So of course, Wix is gonna ask you what kind of website do you wanna create, okay? So today we can select online store, but again, you can always select any option here. And if you recall from last time, there are two ways to create a Wix website. So the one over here on the left is artificial design intelligence, which is that kind of more easy way where Wix is gonna ask you a couple of questions and create the website for you. Um, the option that you always want to go for is to create a website with the editor, which is the tool we've been using throughout. And we're going to start by choosing a template. Okay. Um, because I chose or uh, indicated that I wanted to create an online store, 
Wix all automatically brings me into the store template category. Okay, and you can see here we have tons of different subcategories of online store templates that students can browse and work from depending on what they're looking to create. Okay, so you can kind of check these out. Um, of course, when you choose an online store template, the store feature is going to be already embedded. However, if you wanted to create a store from a different type of template, you can also always add that application to your website. So for example, if you are a musician and you had a personal branding site and you wanted to then add the store feature to sell your merchandise, you can do that as well. Okay, so there's, you know, a couple different options as to how you can create your store, either with a store template or you can add it to a different template, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and work from the same template we used in the first session, this music template here, and I'm gonna go ahead and click edit to begin working from it, okay? So now it's loading and it's bringing me into the editor. Okay. All right, so this might look familiar to you. This is the home page of the template. Um, last time we kind of covered um, a couple of the panels over here on the left. All right, so you'll remember the first panel we looked at was your menus and pages panel. And here's where you have all the different pages of your site and you can add a page, delete a page. We also showed you how to change your page background. And then we spent uh, quite a bit of time here in the ad panel adding new content and features. So going back to the homework, if anyone had any issue finding vector art, okay, you should have navigated over here to the ad panel and it should have been here under vector art or it could have also been under a category called decorative. Okay, so you're not seeing that here because what Wix likes to do is to kind of test different interfaces with their users. So sometimes there'll be like an A interface that'll just have vector art here right up front as a primary category. And sometimes you might get an interface where it has it under a subcategory or a, it's under the decorative category. So that might have been why it was a little tricky to find. Um, but hopefully you did find it and you browse the different vector art options and you were able to drag that into your page, okay? Oops. So here is this rainbow. To answer the question about expanding it, you can change the width and the height by dragging your mouse. You can also change the width and the height over here in your toolbar, okay? And then if you wanted to attach it to your header, I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. And then just remember your header is everything above this horizontal grid line. And here, as soon as it comes up as orange and you see the attach to header indicator, you can drop it in, you'll hear that click. And now it's in your header and it'll be shown on every page in your site, okay? All right, and then, um, I know there was a question about also uploading your own files. Okay, so maybe you wanted to replace this vector art with a file that you have of your own. You could select change vector art. And now you're in your Wix Media Manager. And you can always navigate up to this top button that says upload media here in blue. And here's where you can upload files from your own computer, okay? Or from Google Drive, Dropbox, and so forth. All right, cool. Okay, so hopefully that answered a few of your questions. We'll take some more um, towards, uh, you know, throughout the session today and I'll leave plenty of time at the end to cover um, some more questions as well. All right, but now I'd love to kind of shift gears and begin talking about the Wix online store, okay? So, we're actually going to now navigate over to our panels and we're gonna move down to the fourth panel, which is our add apps panel. All right, and you may have explored this more on your own while working on the homework, okay? 
And I'm just gonna give this another try here to load. Here we go. So this is your app market. And here you have apps from both Wix as well as third-party developers. So it's really similar to your iPhone app store. Okay, so you can kind of browse the different apps. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna search for the store app here. Okay, and you'll see it'll pop up here. All right, and you'll see Wix stores by Wix. So this is the application you wanna recommend your students use to create their e-commerce website. And you're simply just gonna click add. And now Wix is gonna kind of do some magic in the background. It's gonna take a couple seconds here to load everything. And what it's doing is it's adding a lot of new content to your site. All right, so you'll see right away, the store has been added and there's a couple of new features or elements that you're going to see now here in your site. The first thing you should notice here in your navigation menu, I'm just gonna move it over a little bit so we can see, there's a new page that's automatically been added which is called shop, all right? And that's the page that we're looking at right now. And it's also added a gallery of sample products, okay? So these are just kind of default. We're gonna go ahead on course of, and update these products, but they're creating the layout for you so you don't have to do it yourself. The other thing that you might notice, if you navigate over here to your menus and pages panel, is that in addition to your site menu, which we've explored already, you have a couple of other different categories of pages, specifically your store pages. Okay, so Wix again creates all this content for you. So it's created the shop page, but it's also created the pages that are necessary for the complete you know, shopping experience. So for example, it's also added the product page, okay, the cart page, so when folks are ready to check out, and then the thank you page once they've completed the purchase process. All right, so now all these pages are here. Um, you'll only see the shop page in your menu. The rest will be hidden, but know that these have automatically been created for you. All right, the other pages you'll see here are what we call member pages, all right? And these are added to encourage repeat purchases by letting customers save their personal information. So this would be great if you wanted your customers to be able to access like a wish list. Um, check out all their historical orders and so forth. So just like you would create an account with Amazon, you can let your visitors create an account with your shop as well. These aren't required, they can be removed, but by default, they'll be added. All right, so that's all here in the menus and pages panel. And then you may have also noticed that over here on the left towards the bottom, you now also have a store manager panel, which is what we're gonna to use today to make a lot of changes here to the site. All right, so I'll just click get started. And now you can see we have our store manager. Once again, you can check out your store pages. And there's another option here to add store elements. And these are elements that you can add throughout your website. So you may have recalled in the student examples we saw earlier, they also featured some of their products on their home page, And they were able to do that with these essentially kind of widgets that you can place throughout your site to also maybe highlight some new products or some special promotions as well, okay? All right, I'll pause. Any questions about just how to add the store to your site? some of these new elements that are automatically created for you. Okay. All right, then I'm gonna keep going. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna start to add our own products, okay? And a lot of you were able to do this for the homework assignment. So this might be a little bit of a review. Here in the store manager, I'm gonna go ahead and navigate to add products. And when I do that, Wix takes you away from the editor and moves you into your dashboard, which is essentially your back office. And here's where you have a lot of your tools for your store, 
but you also have a lot of tools for just general site management as well as managing your business. So we're gonna explore a lot of different tools here today. Um, but like I said, we'll start first with adding a product. All right. So what Wix is gonna do is gonna just walk you through all of the information that you need to add or create to describe um, this particular product. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna give it a name. So we'll stick with the homework assignment and once again, we'll add an owl t-shirt. All right, so we'll add the name here. And then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to then add images and or videos to showcase the product. And when I click add images, you of course have the option to upload your own, but in our case, I'm gonna use the media from Wix option. Search for an owl shirt and hopefully you are all able to find it. And I'm gonna click add to the Okay, so now you see this is my product image. And now the next thing I'm gonna do is add some product information. Okay, so in addition to the name, you'll have the option to add what we call a ribbon. And I'll show you what this looks like when we go back into the editor, but this is where you can specify if maybe this is a new product, okay? Or maybe something that's seasonal or for you know a specific time of year. You'll then go ahead and set the price. I believe you wanted to sell this product for $10. You could also toggle on the sale option. So if you wanted to set a discount for this, you could do that as well. But we'll leave this at $10. And then we'll just add a description. So maybe this is 100% cotton and organic. Okay. All right. And then you have the option to provide additional information, maybe information on the, your return policy, um, you know, if it's machine washable, care instructions, and so forth. But we'll leave that blank. And we're going to head down to product options because this is really important. Okay. Can I interrupt you, Caitlin? Um, I think Laura, could you mute yourself if you don't mind? We're getting some feedback. Thanks, Laura. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go down to product options. Okay. And we're going to click the blue button and here's where you have the option to set the sizes this shirt comes available in and also the colors. Okay. So in this case, let's start with size and I'm going to just provide the choices. And I believe in the homework, we wanted to set it to small, medium, and large. If you want to add additional sizes, you can type that in here. So maybe we'll add an extra large. Okay, and you just wanna hit comma after so it registers here. And now we'll click add, and those are our sizes that it comes in. We'll add another option, which will be color. Okay, and then we can choose a few here from the drop down. Maybe the shirt also comes in black. We know it comes in green, so I'm gonna type that in. And when I hit the comma, uh, you'll see what'll pop up is your color options, okay? So if you had a specific hex code, you can put that in or you can just do your best guess and come close enough to the t-shirt color and add that here, okay? So we'll go ahead and click add. All right, and then here, it's prompting you to toggle on manage pricing and inventory. So if you really wanted to get into the nitty gritty, you could set specific prices and inventory for each combination of your product. But we're gonna skip that today because that's a level of detail we don't need to go into. But know that that's here. Okay, so I'll toggle that off. And then the next option you can also do is to track your inventory. So again, you can toggle that on, you can specify how many units you have, set the SKU and so forth. So you can see it's a really powerful management tool, has all the options you need. Um, and once you're done creating the product, you'll click save. Oops, sorry about that. 
All right, and you'll see that the owl shirt is now included in your list of products. And when we X out of the dashboard, it's going to refresh. And so now your product is listed here in the store page. And when we click preview, you can now explore it. You can see our ribbon that we added to indicate it's new. You can check out the product page. Okay, you can see the sizes we added, the colors, you can add it to cart. All right, and you can go through the different steps in the process. All right, so let me go back to editor and navigate back to our shop page. Okay. All right, still showing our cart. So let me just click save and refresh here. Okay. All right, so any questions on just how to customize the product? I know this was again part of the homework. So if there was anything else that came up when you were doing it, um, feel free to um, ask any questions now about adding products. Okay. All right, cool. So we've added the products. So you could imagine if you had your students building out their whole store, they would go through the process of, you know, adding a lot more content here. Um, the other thing they can do when they're here in the editor is just like anything else with Wix, you can customize the design and the look and feel of the store by using the settings in your floating menu here. Okay, so you can optimize the layout of your store, how the product's displayed. Um, you can change up the design, maybe add a background color, and so forth. Okay, so they can get really creative, like we saw in the candle example earlier. How did you get to your shop, that shop page? Sorry, was that a question mark? Okay, please show me how you guys did it. Page that you would just be for the shop page. Sorry, you're a little hard to hear. Um, Can you a little just show me how you got to your shop page? How to get to the shop page. Okay, yep. So you can navigate to the different pages in your store. Okay. Over here by Perfect. many pages in the store pages category. So if you want to check out your product pages, you can do that. You can also use the panel known as store manager here um, below as well and navigate to store pages. So a couple different places you can do that. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, how did you, I missed something. How did you get to the dashboard? Sorry. Yeah, that's a good question. So you can access the dashboard when you're in your store manager panel here. Click on store manager, go to dashboard. Okay, and that'll bring you to um, your back end here. You can also from the editor, I'll show you another place you can access it. Here in settings, you can also always scroll down to my dashboard. Okay, so you can get there from a couple different places. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Okay. All right, so We've added the products, we've kind of played around with the you know, front end of the store, but there's a few more things that we wanna make sure that we you know, customize and set um, here in the back end, all right? And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna um, set up the store shipping, okay? So over here in the dashboard, you have a, a menu that's um, you know, set on this black background, all right? And you can navigate down to settings, okay? So here in the dashboard, you wanna to go to settings. And you have lots of different management tools for your site as well as your store, okay? And you'll see here, you have a section called store shipping. All right, and when you click on that, here's where you can customize your shipping and fulfillment for your e-commerce business. 
All right, so you can decide if it's just gonna be a domestic business or you're gonna to ship to other countries. All right, and you can toggle these on or off depending on your business. Okay, and then when you click on domestic, you can determine you know, what type of shipping you're gonna provide. Um, lots of different options. We won't go into all of these today. But again, you know, if you were teaching this in your class and this was material you wanted to cover and specify, you know, you could use this as a way to kind of talk through that material and have the students, you know, decide for their business what's the best way for them to ship. Okay, so that's store shipping and that's here available to you in the dashboard um, under settings. Okay. Can I ask a quick question to Allison? Yeah, go for it. Given that shipping is so complex now, do you ever see creating a smaller module for supply chain management? Yes. Yeah, actually, I did um, create that for another partner. So okay. we could certainly add it to the common retail course if you'd like. Um, that is well, something that wasn't in that first draft, basically, that made its way in later. Actually, we have a professor, Hamid, and Hamid is teaching one of our service operations courses. So this may be a practical tool, now given the new AACSB requirements, that would fit nicely if we had a short module on e-commerce shipping, allowing students to really focus in on this topic in the operations course. Because my goal is to have multiple classes talking about e-commerce, because every student will be involved in somehow in setting up his or her own business. So yeah, absolutely. I think a supply chain lesson is really important. Right. And what else we can do, what I've done with it is, we won't show you this right now, but um, Wix is uh, very, very into integrations for drop shipping. Okay. And so it goes into drop shipping as well, which All is right. um, nice. Yeah. Thank you. Good, good question. Right. Um, Allison, anything else to add here on shipping? No, it's no. Besides okay. going into you know rules and all the different kinds of um, USPS, UPS. No. <laughs> For now, the tool the tool tries to be very simple. So cool. All right, we'll stick with simple today. Um, all right, so store shipping, you'll see right below that over here again on the left where my mouse is, store tax. Okay, so here's where you'll have to manually input um, the tax for each you know, state and country. So the students would go ahead and click the blue button to add country. It'll default to the US. Um, you can put in, you know, all states, or maybe you're just shipping to a few. Whoops, sorry. New York, select, all right, and then add. And then it'll prompt you to put in the tax rate, okay? And you can you know, set other um, specifications um, if you're gonna also tax on shipping and so forth. And then you can continue to add more states. So again, unfortunately, it's a little bit manual, um, but this is, again, where you could have the students, you know, go through that process. So is there an app that allows multiple tax rates within the state? Um, not that I'm aware of. I don't know, Allison, do you know if there's any additional app that you could integrate here to help make this, you know, an easier process? Not that I know of offhand. Um, I could because certainly look it up. In Illinois, we've got multiple tax rates depending on the county. So it's not at the state level, we tax on the county level. Right, yeah. I'm gonna look that up for you, Mark. I think Chicago's 10.25, I could be wrong. Where your page, I believe, is 8%. If anybody wants to help me out here. But I do know that we have different tax rates. It's not a state tax rate. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm going to look it up for you. Okay. All right, Allison, let us I, know if you find I any think, questions. I think, so I'm not 100% sure, but what it might be is like a state tax rate, and on top of it, there's um, maybe a county tax rate, and perhaps also or separately, there's a city tax rate. 
So, you know, it looks like a different tax rate, but I think it's just layers or stacks on top. Yeah, so that it could be, I, I actually did just find, and I have heard of this, I didn't think of it offhand. There's an app called Al Avalara, and basically it allows you to um, put in your zip code, and then it, it sort of gets all your local tax rules. I don't know if then it allows you to start populating those multiples or not, but it at least allows you to switch between like manual and kind of populated local taxes. Does that help, Mark? And that's an app. Yes. Okay. Avalara. Which means anybody teaching it really in Illinois, we would have to vary, we would have to use that app. Otherwise, it wouldn't make sense for our students. That totally, yeah, that does make sense actually. Okay. We're gonna, I'll note that down to discuss it with Cheryl. Right. Feel free to you can put that in the chat box. Because anybody yeah. who launches an Illinois business will have, it's gonna be by zip code and not by the state. Thanks. Okay. Great, and we'll send over, if we have any additional information, we'll maybe check in with our stores product team to see if there's any new features that maybe are coming up or, or ways to help with this particular um, feature. Okay. All right, um, so that's shipping tax. And then the other important piece here that you wanna make sure you navigate to is accept payments, okay? And you'll see there'll be a red exclamation point letting you know that this has not been set up, all right? And so again, it's important to note that to create your Wix store, to add it to your site, to add products, that's all available to you as a free user of Wix. So the students can create a free account and do everything that we've done here today so far to create their site, um, excuse me, to create their store. However, once they're looking to actually, you know, launch their site and their site and interact with customers, um, it does require them to be a premium Wix user, okay? Um, so that's something that we can, of course, um, provide to students through our partnership. We can offer them premium coupon codes to be able to, um, you know, upgrade and with additional benefits and features. Um, but, you know, you'll notice here, you can select the payment options that you want to offer to your customers, so like credit cards, PayPal, um, if you were to be accepting point of sale, you can do that here as well. Um, but as soon as you click it will prompt you to continue the process of becoming a premium user. Okay, so just something to note, um, you know, again, the students can do just about everything we've done today, but the minute they really actually want to have someone submit a credit card payment, um, you know, it will require them to change their account status. Okay. All right. And Laura, I think if, if you weren't able to mute, if you could do so, we were just hearing a little feedback again. I don't know why it, it goes. I didn't touch it. I don't know why it goes from mute to unmute all of a sudden. Oh gosh, phantom, <laughs> phantom mute button. Uh, well, it seems to be much better. So thank you. All right, so those are you know, just a couple of the other tools related to the online store that we wanted to highlight here in the dashboard. Um, and now we're gonna kind of move and segue into once you have your business up and running, how do you actually market it? How do you manage it, manage your customers and begin to kind of grow your business, okay? So I'm gonna actually navigate back to the main menu of my dashboard and just highlight a few of our other business tools that you might wanna use um, you know, with your students um, to talk about some of these concepts. All right, so here we are in the dashboard. Here's where we did all of our product updates. And then about halfway down, we have what we call a Send by Wix, okay? And this is our suite of products to help business owners manage and grow their business. All right, and I'm just gonna highlight a few things here that might be of interest um, to you and to your classes. 
So the first one here is customer management, okay? And here's where you can, you know, conduct all of your business related to um, management and communication with your customers. So the first thing you'll be brought into is your inbox. And here's where um, you can message with your customers, um, anyone who's signing up to uh, you know, receive a promotion, connects with you, maybe you're using the Wix chat, all of that messaging activity is gonna come here through your inbox. You can also connect to your own Gmail account to receive those messages. Um, and you can do things like create contact lists, all right? So if you wanted to have all of your customers in a list because you know you're gonna message them a promotion, you can do that here um, and so forth. So these are all of your CRM tools, okay? So that's customer management. Below that, we have a whole section dedicated to marketing and search engine optimization or SEO. And when you click there, the first tool that you'll see here is get found on Google, okay? So often when we um, work with our students, um, when we talk to them during our workshops, you know, we show them, of course, the whole process of creating and designing your website, but we always emphasize how important it is to make sure their website is gonna be discoverable, okay? Because if they develop a beautiful portfolio or a store and no one can find it on Google, then you know it's really not going to be worth it. So we always want to make sure that they're aware of this get found on Google tool, which will help them make sure that their website is optimized for search engines. So in other words, it's going to have the right keywords, tags, and signals embedded in the site to show up against relevant keywords that they set. So their name, their business name, um, you know, the type of work they do in their specific location and so forth. And so with Wix, we partner directly with Google to create this Wix SEO wizard. All right. And again, it's just a simple tool that's going to have the students, once they click start now, actually um, input a few pieces of information. So the first question is going to be, what's your business name? Um, so we'll just put Caitlin's t-shirt shop. All right, and then I'll ask if they have a business location. So I'm gonna go ahead and say it's just online. And then it'll ask them to put in three keywords, okay? And I'll just start with three. So I'll put in my store name, followed by a comma. I'll put in t-shirt shop. New Jersey, my location, and maybe we also own the market on OWL t-shirts, so I'll put that there as well. And then they'll click Create SEO Plan, and it's then going to automatically create a custom plan for their site to help them put in all those keywords and tags and signals to make sure that their, search, uh, their site is gonna be ranked on Google, okay? So it's a great tool, it's a great opportunity to kind of talk about SEO with the students, um, and it's a good last step before they go ahead and publish their website, okay? So this is their checklist that's automated, and you'll see anything in red the student would have to address, and Wix provides them with the directions on how to do that, um, and when it's done, they'll connect to Google, okay? So that's Get Found on Google, that's our primary SEO tool. Further down here on the marketing list, you have um, the opportunity to create email marketing campaigns, all right? So if the students wanna send out a promotion to family and friends. Um, we also have social posts. So in a similar fashion, we provide all these cool templates for them to maybe promote their business on Instagram or uh, Facebook, so they can really kind of, you know, hone in on some of their, you know, marketing and creative skills as part of their assignments. All right, we have a video maker. They can create a video about their business and also post that to their social media, okay? All right, so those are just a few of the marketing tools. Again, there's a lot more here, but I just wanna be cognizant of time. Um, so I'll just sample a few. 
And then I'll also just highlight below marketing, we have um, our analytics tool. Okay, so this is gonna give the students basic stats on the number of visitors um, that are coming to their site. It'll show them that over time. Of course, the site has no visitors yet, so there's no information. And then there'll also be um, some store stats as well um, if they were to upgrade to their premium plan. Okay, so these are some analytics that they can check out in addition to some of the marketing tools here. Okay, all right, so that was kind of a lot of information. That was just about everything we wanted to kind of highlight today, um, just to you know, close the loop for everyone on how to kind of create that store and then access a lot of the great management tools. Um, but with about 10 minutes left, I wanna just give everyone the opportunity to ask some questions. Um, if there are certain features you'd like for us to demo, happy to do that as well, or if this just, you know, space for a broader conversation about um, some of the topics today, I want to give some time for that. So, any questions? Yeah, I have a question. So, um, you know, we're getting a, a very good broad overview, and I very much appreciate that. Um, oh, and by the way, my house is under construction, so sorry about the background noise. Um, the, uh, I presume if there's like something that I, so like I want to know more about data analytics. So I'm really curious about the, um, four uh, things that you have over there. I want to know more about them. Um, I'm presuming I can Google and find some videos or documents and also do you have a help here that it might answer in, uh, and could you tell us, you know, how to explore something on our, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, the best resource is our Wix Help Center, and you can always just Google Wix Help. You can find it here. Um, it's support.wix.com. I also have it linked in the presentation today, um, which I'll share with you guys, so you always have it as a reference. Um, so it'll be here as well. Okay, and with the Help Center, we have step-by-step um, -step guides and tutorials on anything, um, you know, and everything that you might want to know about Wix. So for analytics, you know, you can search for articles here. We also have a Wix YouTube channel, okay? And there we have, you know, video tutorials on a lot of our different products, um, design features, and so forth. All right, so um, those are great resources. Um, our team is also offering up one-to-one -one sessions. So if anyone feels like, you know, after they've had, you know, this session, time to explore the platform, um, we can share our kind of team sign up link. And if you want to spend, you know, any time of any type of one on one time with us, um, you can set up like a 30 minute slot to review any more of these kind of products and features in more detail. We can offer that this summer as well. But the Wix Help Center is your, your best place to go. Okay. I also came across the Wix e-commerce school. Um, yes, so Allison, I know you partnered with the team to develop some of those materials. Do you wanna talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I did. I mean, it was mostly their team, but um, they definitely, we worked together a little bit since we already had the syllabus. But yeah, those are just um, mini courses, basically, in Wix stores. Uh, I don't, believe that it really covers anything more than what the academic course does. Um, it just kind of does it in a non-academic and sort of bite-sized way. But you Correct. do have to register. I don't believe it costs money, but- you No, know, it's, it's yeah. free. Yeah, but, uh, but yeah, it's just kind of like these bite-sized, and there's video along with it, which is nice. I do plan to integrate that into the course in terms of just more support for the classroom. And because we have four digital classes, we could actually go deeper in some topics like the analytics, like the promotion, than I think other, other um, actually other schools can do so. Because we have so many classes now focused in on digital. In addition to that, what I was, sorry, um, but sure. what, in, in addition, and this is more, you know, SXU specific, 
but um, really, so we've got this lovely digital commerce course, which is really focused on Wix. And then of course the marketing faculty are really thinking about what are the parts of this that they could delve into into their digital marketing courses. But also there are parts of this that can be delved into other course, in, into in other core courses. So I don't know enough about Wix to be able to figure out what might be relevant in the strategy course that I teach. But certainly, um, you know, in the in the business analytics course, in, sorry, in the in the whatever it's going to be called, uh, Bana 251, um, there there probably it would probably be useful to have an overview session on how you integrate Excel into Wix, uh, depending on when they're going to be taking that. And I bet there's other courses where a session or two on something in Wix that's relevant to what they're teaching would be really useful. So, but that's probably an action item that we need to take as a school to figure out what, what parts of this are given in the overview, or maybe even not even talked about, that could be delved into in a specific course. Yeah, and we'd be happy um, if you have a, a list or an idea of some of the other you know concept concepts and topics that you want to cover we'd be happy to kind of you know brainstorm or kind of think through what other um options there are here in the wix platform that could be you know complementary tools for um your class so um, i just pulled up another section of the dashboard called marketing integration well, you know taking analytics to the next level. Students can also connect here to Google Analytics if that's being incorporated into the curriculum. Um, you know, other kind of tools to be able to see heat maps like Hotjar and so forth. So, you know, these are other areas that we can explore to kind of help, um, you know, craft additional material for, for your classes. Um, I think it might also be good to have something um, uh, a brief introduction, we're doing this new class, Achieving Career Excellence, um, which talks about, you know, LinkedIn, social media, preparing your resume, all that, just to give them um, information on this so that they know it's out there. And then at the graduate level, we have um, marketing management where they tend to do like a project on, um, a group project on a particular business, either one that they create on their own or one that's out there. And I think it would be helpful for that one as well. Both okay. of those, actually. Right, yeah, we're actually kicking off um, an MBA class um, where uh, we're with one of our other partners, Brandeis University, next week, where we'll be doing a couple of different sessions um, and helping the students do just that. So they're doing group projects, creating a business, um, and they'll be kind of touching upon everything from, you know, the site development to the analytics um, to, you know, how to market it and so forth. So really... Um, you know, more than happy to kind of explore some of these other ideas and classes with you. Sounds good. Um, well, we have another, I'll send everyone a recording of this. Um, also, the advanced website design class that we've been talking about, because we really want to work with arts and sciences, um, we would love to see that for more interdisciplinary work. Okay, great. So as, well, good. as well as the reservation system for our hospitality program. Bookings. Bookings. Got it. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so Mark, we'll follow up with you on, you know, a couple of these different items here. Sure. Uh, and then uh, we'll also share with you the material that you can, um, from today, that you can share out with the group. Um, and then I think we mentioned at the start, we also include another um, assignment. If anyone wants to continue to kind of brush up on their skills, um, we have a pet business uh, assignment here. Um, we're going to share, uh, I guess we'll share through Mark, um, a copy of this assignment. Um, unless Allison, you want to also drop a share doc in the chat. We can, we'll make it available two ways for everybody. Um, but you know, again, last time I have not been able to drop documents in the chat for some reason, but okay. we've got yeah, it PDF. Not, we'll send it via email after today's session. Okay. It'd be better to get it from Mark 
because oh, cool. we pay we pay attention to this stuff. For yeah, me. there you go. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. Yeah, and just as a um, as a preview, if if you are interested in doing it, it goes into collections, which is really kind of important. Okay. And um, doing product widgets as well, so that you don't always have to just see your products on the store on the shop page. You can have them all over your site. Do you have um, a finished one that we can look at? So after we complete the sure. homework, because, because we're minus mentored. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's it's not the same as, I mean, I, I, this is great, but you know, the four days when we just were at South Carolina doing this for eight hours, what an incredible experience. So after we do this homework, if we could check it ourselves, if you could just then tell us, here's the link, and this is what really what yours should look at, we can gauge it that way. That's a great idea. And I, I actually just pulled up the site that I made using this homework. Okay. I'm just want to make sure it's all correct before I put it in the chat. So right. I'll, I'll just do it with your email. And if I'll send you my, the digital marketing descriptions so you can see the different classes we offer, as well as maybe it's the supply chain course, which is really service operations. Because the more that we could talk about Wix in different classes, the more we could develop our students for e-commerce solutions. That'd be great. Yeah, send that over, Mark, and we'll take a look. Okay. Uh, we can start talking about all of these other classes. Right. Okay. All right, anything else? Any questions? I just have one question. Are there any other uh, projects that uh, you have that uh, are like these uh, where one can practice further? Oh yeah, we have tons of other exercises and assignments, so happy to share more of them with you. Um, Allison has quite a library of those, so we can send those over as well in the follow-up. I mean, I want to make sure that everyone has the original class. I mean, every, everyone can follow the class materials that Cheryl used, because that's really the most in-depth way to learn how to use Wix. Absolutely. And we can make sure, I don't know, does that, uh, Allison, we can send that over as well, just as a, in case um, anyone here doesn't have that copy. Oh, the syllabus? Yeah. The syllabus with, can. with the updated, because I'm, I'm sure you made changes. Yes, and, and I definitely can. It's, it's a lot, so it'll just be sort of a shared link and just don't be overwhelmed. There's a section, I think you can just go and see all the activities if that's all you're looking for. Otherwise, you can go through all the lecture notes and everything. Sounds good. All right, so should well, I, you'll send us, you'll send me the materials. I will send it to everyone who attended. That would be great. Thanks, Mark. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. Good to see you again. Um, and we'll end right on time to let you guys get back to your Friday afternoon. All right. All right, and I'll talk to you. I'll email you both. Yeah. All right, take care. Thanks, guys. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you.